CT is a useful tool for the diagnosis of acute cholecystitis. This refers to acute inflammation of the gallbladder. It is a primary complication of cholelithiasis and is the most common cause of acute pain in the right upper quadrant. Acute cholecystitis is a common cause of hospital admission and is responsible for approximately 10% of all patients with abdominal pain. Cholelithiasis, or the presence of gallstones, is the major risk factor and causes up to 95% of cases. Patients with acute cholecystitis present with constant right upper quadrant pain, which can radiate to the right shoulder. Pain typically presents, persists for more than six hours in contradistinction to intermittent right upper quadrant pain of biliary colic. The patients can also present with nausea, vomiting, and fever. Four useful sites to look for on CT for the diagnosis of acute cholecystitis includes number one, the presence of gallstones, also known as cholelithiasis. It is important to note that gallstones isodense to bile will be missed on CT. In these instances, ultrasound is invaluable in the detection of cholelithiasis. Number two, distension of the gallbladder. Number three, gallbladder wall thickening. And number four, pericholecystic fluid and inflammatory fat stranding related to the gallbladder. Let's start by looking at a normal case of the gallbladder so we can distinguish this from abnormal cases so we can diagnose acute cholecystitis. The following is a contrast enhanced CT of the abdomen in the axial plane. Scrolling down, we can see on the right, this is the patient's liver, on the left, the spleen. As we go further down, we see a pear-shaped structure in the gallbladder fossa right next to the liver. This is the patient's gallbladder. In this case, the gallbladder is normal. It is not distended. It has thin walls. The surrounding mesenteric fat is clean with no stranding. And if we window the study, we're looking within the gallbladder lumen, looking for evidence of sludge or gallstones. In this case, there are none. We can confidently say that this is a negative study for acute cholecystitis. Now, if we go to the next case, this is a contrast enhanced CT in the axial plane in a different patient. This patient happens to be 83 year old. Year old. As we go down, we're looking for the gallbladder. We can immediately see that this gallbladder is markedly more distended than the previous. The gallbladder wall is thickened. The surrounding fat is fuzzy, which indicates stranding. Looking within the gallbladder, we can see in the proximal gallbladder, there is a small ovoid hyperdense structure, which is a gallstone. So in this case, we have multiple reasons to indicate, to come to the conclusion that this patient has acute cholecystitis. We have number one, cholelithiasis. Number two, distension of the gallbladder. Number three, gallbladder wall thickening. And number four, pericholecystic inflammatory fat stranding. Let's look at another case. This patient is 37 year old, year old and presents with right upper quadrant pain. As we scroll down, we can see a pear shaped structure in the gallbladder fossa which is a gallbladder. You can immediately see that the gallbladder wall is markedly thickened. Contained within the gallbladder, there are multiple locules of gas. These indicate gas containing gallstones. The gallbladder is moderately distended and the surrounding fat is fuzzy, indicating stranding. Therefore, this patient has acute cholecystitis. A 
next case demonstrates a complication of acute cholecystitis. <clears throat> This is a, another CT scan of the abdomen in a 74-year-old patient with right upper quadrant pain. Scrolling down, we can see the gallbladder is distended with thick walls containing a gallstone with pericholecystic straining. This indicates acute cholecystitis. On the left anterolateral aspect of the gallbladder, there is a lobulated fluid density collection, which is in segment four of the liver. We can see a fistulous communication between the fluid collection and with the gallbladder. In this region, the gallbladder wall is indistinct. This indicates that the gallbladder has in fact ruptured, resulting in a contained perforation and an abscess within the liver. There is stranding and congestion of the mesenteric vasculature in the right upper quadrant and some free fluid here in Morrison's pouch. So this is a complication of acute cholecystitis re resulting in perforation and a intrahepatic abscess. This is another patient, 88 year old with right upper quadrant pain. We can see the presence of a nasogastric tube in situ, tip of which is ending in the distal stomach at the pylorus. We're looking closely at the gallbladder. Gallbladder is in fact collapsed, but what we can see is that there are gas locules within the gallbladder. There are also gas locules in the biliary tree. So you can see all these hypodense structures, which is the same density as air in the lungs. There are branching and central in position, which indicates pneumobilia. As we look closely at this, the gallbladder is inseparable from the duodenum, which is here. This is suspicious for a fistula between the gallbladder and the duodenum, also known as a collodocoduodenal fistula. As we go further down, we can see there is dilatation of the small bowel, which raises the possibility of a small bowel obstruction. Now, if there is a fistulous communication between the gallbladder and the small bowel, this could result in a gallbladder being passed through the gallbladder into the small bowel and then lodged in the distal small bowel, resulting in a bowel obstruction. And in fact, when we scroll all the way down into the pelvis, we can see that there is a ovoid structure here in the small bowel, which is a gallstone. And this results in a small bowel obstruction, also known as gallstone alias. This requires surgical management. Our last case is in a 34 year old patient, also presenting with right upper quadrant pain. We look at the gallbladder. In contradistinction to the other cases of acute cholecystitis, the gallbladder wall is not thickened. There is no pericholecystic fat stranding. And we're looking for the presence of gallstones, which we do not see in this case. Therefore, we cannot confidently say that this patient has acute cholecystitis. We now need to look for other causes of right upper quadrant pain. A little bit further down, we can see that there is an abnormal structure in the right upper quadrant, which is adjacent to the inferior right lobe of liver and large bowel. The structure is fat density with a rim of stranding. Centrally, there are engorged vessels. This structure is on the anti-mesenteric side of the colon and is, in, is compatible with epiplog appendagitis. This is inflammation of a epiplog appendage 
It's a self-limiting entity and does not require surgical intervention. Thanks for listening. If you found this helpful, please check out my other videos. Please like and subscribe for further for more videos.